Okay, Daily Lives of High School Boys, episodes 9 and 10. <laughs> so, Yoshitake's uh, sister and Hidenori's brother have started dating. But Hidenori's brother didn't know about this until just now. Let's try introducing her to some other guy and see if she likes him. Because maybe she just really wants a boyfriend. <laughs> and as they're calling up the guy, the guy asks, Is she cute? And they're like, Uh... <laughs> They all totally forgot what her face looks like. <laughs> what? New story, obviously. Hidenori is visiting his grandparents, and it's literally in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly this girl appears and knocks him into the water, and we don't know who she is, but maybe he does? No, he doesn't. <laughs> so it turns out that um, Hidenori looked like her friend when she saw him from behind, so that's why she attacked him. So Hidenori's like, Clearly she kicks you all the time, so therefore, I'm giving you permission to kick her back this one time as retribution for what she did to me, and then he just ends up throwing them both in the river. <laughs> They're like bonding and hugging, and it's very adorable. So the three of them hang out all summer, but tomorrow it's time for him to leave. So she kind of nervously confronts him, like, hey, do you have a girlfriend? Just curious. So before she's able to confess her love for Hidenori, he's like, oh, by the way, I found out recently, we're actually cousins! And she's like, oh god, no. New story, we're back in school. Hidenori can't find his glasses. He definitely seems like the breakout character of this show. He seems like the main guy. His glasses are obviously on top of his head, but no one seems to be noticing this, except for, what's the kid's name? Mashio? That's not his name. But he seems to be like wondering why no one's noticing the glasses on his head. They all go on a hunt for Hidenori's glasses, but this kid the whole time is just like, it's on your head. Why is no one saying anything? And once they finally point it out, like, hey, they're on your head the whole time, they're like, oh, you're such an idiot. And this kid the whole time was like stressed out about it. He's like, they must be doing a joke. They must be playing some kind of joke. But they weren't. They were just being stupid. New story. The student council is working on problems in the school. So the only thing they're able to figure out is what they should eat. But then um, a teacher suddenly comes in and whispers about this scandal. They leave the uh, student council president behind so he just ends up cleaning up the room waiting for them. So a new story, but still with the student council. Two of them are talking about um, how they got to see some panties the other day when girls were walking up the stairs to the station. So they call up that girl from the other school, the other student council president, and they're like, can you come over and help us with the internet? They kind of trick her into getting up on a step ladder so that they can hopefully see her panties. And they kind of only look at each other and nod, and then she leaves. And they're like, thank you for helping us fix our internet. But then they just end up kind of feeling guilty for what they did and deceiving her. So in order to make up for what they did, they're um, helping out with another school's internet connection. So the president of this school comes in and she starts asking questions about why they are in the student council and one of them explains that, you know, he used to be pretty wild back in the day so the, the president helped straighten him out so he's very appreciative so she's like, oh yes, my vice president used to be very wild, right? And he's like, um, yes? That one, eh. After the, um, Credits. We have this thing called Ar Arctidemon? <laughs> Something about a bully? Oh, you know what? It's gonna be the past for the um, elementary school girls, right? Yeah, because that one girl was a bully in elementary school. So that's why no one likes her now, why she can't get a boyfriend. Oh, even Yoshitake and his superhero mask are there! <laughs> that's cute. Nice throwback to an earlier episode. So after the fight, we sort of ended up becoming friends. Okay, and um, that episode is over. Eh, as a whole, that episode was really not all that funny. Uh, I think most of the stories kind of flopped in that episode. But, um, you know, as usual, you can just go on to the next episode, wait for the next story, and, and hope for the best. So let's watch episode 10. Tanakuri is having a meta conversation with the other two, like, why haven't I been showing up in any of the stories recently? Because we're only broadcasting the interesting parts, and you're just way too normal. So anyway, Hidenori is at the convenience store waiting for who's ever in the bathroom to finish so that he could go in and use the bathroom. But the kid in there is taking forever. So he's frantically looking for the closest bathroom. So he stumbles his way to the park restrooms. 
but the literary girl is sitting there. <laughs> so he has to go elsewhere. Oh, and that story's over. <laughs> Just like that. We'll never learn where he goes to the bathroom. Anyway, more toilet humor. A kid who was using the bathroom had no toilet paper, so he had to use regular paper. And it was just... It's making his day terrible, because then he slipped on a banana peel and hit his head, and just everything's going wrong, because he spent too much time in the bathroom. He even dives into the water to save a kitten, but it's just a stuffed animal. But I guess it ends up working out, because he's slightly delayed and doesn't end up crashing into a girl who's rushing off to school. The end. <laughs> So Hidenori heads back down to the river, and he finds the literary girl there, and he leaves a message for her. <laughs> and he's, he's asking for his jacket back because when she knocked herself unconscious that one time, he left his jacket with her. <laughs> then they meet incidentally on the street, and she's shocked to see him, and he's just like, whatever, and keeps walking. But then she chases him down. So they reach the river and they get kind of tired out with all their running. And she's like, the boy I was walking with, who's a classmate, he's all my lover. <laughs> like she's all freaked out that they're like secret, secret lovers or something. Anyway, new story. Uh, Hidenori is at home making himself some soup and watching TV. But then some uh, mochi gets stuck in his throat. And at the same time, Yoshitake gets some mochi stuck in his throat too. This is super stressful, but I get the feeling that they're not all going to die because that would, that would definitely change the tone of the show. They're saved by their siblings, which is nice. Tadakuni's sister is running to school and she trips on some black ice and she falls on her face. Except Hidenori notices and he's like, aww, I should help her. <laughs> But as he's walking over, he falls on his face, too. Mitsuo comes over to approach him. But I get the feeling he's probably gonna slip on some ice, too. And he does. <laughs> and Tadakuni's sister comes back. And then she just ends up slipping again. Idiots! <laughs> New story. Um, this guy is stealing people's purses and wallets. And, um, uh, he didn't... No, uh, uh... Motoharu's wallet gets stolen. So they're like, we have to chase after him! Quick, let's borrow this kid's bike! And Motoharu jumps on the bike, but he can't ride the bike. So Yoshitaki's like, oh my god, you can't ride a bike? I have to teach you how! They end up practicing all day. And so he finally does it, and they're all like, yay! You did it, you learned how to ride a bike! <laughs> but what about your wallet? I love how the various characters in the scene get to say the title of the show at the end of each scene, Danshi Kokosei no Nichijo, and they always say it in like kind of a unique way. They're like, Danshi Kokosei no Nichijo, or something. I think that's really funny. So Motoharu and his sister are making dinner, and um, Motoharu does an awesome job. And she's kind of like, oh, but I'm supposed to be the one who's good at cooking. So she challenges him to make various dishes, which he does awesome at all of them. Yoshitake and Hidenori are hanging out, and they're bored, so they start playing catch. But they don't have a ball or gloves, so just kidding. They don't really play catch. They roll their jacket into a ball and throw it back and forth. But obviously that doesn't work, because that was just absurd. Turns out they were the only idiots who came to school on, uh, on a day when there was no school. So that's why they're so bored. <laughs> okay. Now after the credits, we have the funky high school girls again, which I could... I could do without these scenes, but I watch them anyway. Sometimes they're good. Sakasahara's so kind of pissed about um, the girl who was the bully. And the other girls are kind of trying to get him to relax. And um, he's like, it's all right, whatever. All I want to do is this weird wrestling move. I hope that's all right. And she's like, OK. And then we get this. And it was... I don't even know what that was. Alright, that's all for that episode. There was no Tadakuni in any of those episodes. I think those two episodes kind of strayed away from what makes this show really great. And that is the, the focus on the mundane and the creative way the boys spend their time as opposed to um, like actual 
storylines. <laughs> I know that sounds weird to say. And I think part of it is actually suffering because of the lack of Tadakuni, who is the straight man. Anyway, there's actually only one episode of- uh, one I'm watching left, because there's only two episodes left of episodes 11 and 12. So I'll see you next time for that. Bye!